Sleep apnea is a process when we fall asleep, the muscles of our upper throat tend to relax and they can either fully or partially close off at night, keeping from air from the outside world from getting down to our lungs where it needs to be. Sleep apnea is that process when that airway is either partially or fully closing at night. Patients typically know that they have sleep apnea when they have symptoms like snoring or waking up gasping for air at night or their bed partner might even frankly tell them that they stopped in breathing during their sleep. In general too, they may feel sleepy during the day because they're really not getting that good, consistent, restful sleep. Sometimes it's a little bit more vague in its manifestation, so sometimes people just feel like their brain is in a fog, that they can't think right. It can also really affect our mood. Those are all things that I ask about when I see patients with sleep apnea. The gold standard treatment for sleep apnea is CPAP or BiPAP, which is basically a machine that is able to generate pressurized air that's communicated through a tube and through a mask on the patient's face that either goes over the nose or the mouth or both. That air going into the airway basically can hold the throat open at night, just like if you were to blow into a balloon just to hold it open, not to blow it up. That's how the machine actually works to treat the sleep apnea. There are multiple other treatments coming out now for sleep apnea. So there are some non-surgical treatments, some that involve devices that are worn in the mouth or different pillows or positional devices that are used. There are also multiple types of surgeries out there for sleep apnea. Some include surgeries inside the throat, some are surgeries on the jaw structure. More recently, there's been this implant developed that basically is able to stimulate the airway to open while patients sleep at night. This implant for sleep apnea is actually three components. The first component is a battery pack that sits in the right side of the chest. Underneath that battery pack, we put a pressure sensor between the ribs. And that pressure sensor is able to sense each time we try to initiate a breath during sleep. We make a second incision up under the chin here, where we go in and we find the nerve that runs the tongue muscle, and we put a stimulator cuff around that nerve. So all in all, those two sites are allowed to fully heal, and the device gets activated. And at night, the patient has a remote, looks something like this, that they turn it on with at night. And then after a lag time that allows them to fall asleep first, with every breath, their tongue muscle will move forward. The tongue muscle is a large structure. It's attached to a lot of different points in that upper airway. So if you can move that tongue forward, you can open up that airway at multiple levels. The Inspire device is something that after surgery is actually titratable and adjustable. So there are a lot of different settings on this device, including uh, the amount of voltage that we can deliver to move the tongue forward, pause time, start time, therapy duration. There are even more advanced settings that can be changed for comfort or for efficacy if need be. This device was FDA approved in 2014 for certain patients that have obstructive sleep apnea. There are other kinds of sleep apnea, so we actually have to make sure that your sleep apnea is obstructive. Um, there are kinds of sleep apnea where the stopping of breathing isn't actually due to the throat closing off, so we do have to make sure that's the case. You cannot be significantly overweight to get this device. Uh, and lastly, you have to have the appropriate collapse pattern of your throat to get this done. We have to do something called a sleep endoscopy, where we look in the upper throat with a camera under sedated conditions to see what's collapsing and in what pattern. There was one pattern of collapse that was shown to do less well with this device, and we do have to rule that out before moving forward with the surgery. Most of my patients who have done this Almost all of my patients who have done this have tried a mask in the past because that's one of the things we're looking for. You know, this is not the first line therapy for someone who has obstructive sleep apnea. So there are many patients who have been unable to tolerate, unable to wear a mask for various reasons, who then go through the surgery and are able to sleep at night. Uh, they no longer snore, they feel more rested in the morning, and they often will report that their bed partners are very happy that they have done it as well. I would say most patients, even those who we may need to work on some of those settings afterwards, do some troubleshooting, even some that may need to add in, say, positional therapy or something like an oral device after the fact as a combination therapy, the overwhelming response that I get from patients in almost every case is they're still very glad that they went through it and they're very glad that they have that as a tool to help manage their sleep apnea.